Trapped in open water after jumping off a yacht to swim, a group of friends suddenly realize that they forgot to put the ladder down. The question arises, will they be able to survive and climb back up? The story introduces us to a group of best friends Amy, her boyfriend Dan, Zach, and Lauren, who travel together, have fun, and film their adventures on camera. During one of their outings, Dan, noticeably tipsy, picks up his camera and starts spinning around with it, causing him to lose his balance and fall off a cliff. Despite getting out with minor bruises, he returns to his terrified friends. Five years later, Amy, her husband James, and their little daughter Sarah travel to Mexico City to celebrate Zach's 30th birthday on Dan's new yacht. On the way to the yacht club where the yacht is parked, they are overtaken by Zach and Lauren on a motorcycle. Upon arrival, Amy is the only one of her friends who wears a life jacket and takes her time getting near the yacht. This is because after her father drowned while sailing together, she develops hydrophobia. With her husband's support, Amy overcomes her fear and climbs up on deck. The friends explore the yacht and discover Dan in the cabin with his new girlfriend, Michelle. The group hoists the sails and sets off. During the journey, Zach and Lauren ask Dan how he could afford such a boat, but he guffaws and evades answering. After putting their daughter to bed, Amy and James leave a walkie-talkie in her cabin to hear when she wakes up. Meanwhile, the party is in full swing as the friends drink, dance, and have fun. Michelle suggests they all go for a swim in the sun-warmed water, and they happily accept. Amy decides to stay on the boat with Dan and they check on baby Sarah in the cabin. While there, Dan confesses to his ex-lover that he wants kids and regrets his past behavior. Amy, who is happy with her husband, shortens the awkward conversation and suggests Dan return to the deck. The rest of the friends are overboard, enjoying themselves. While swimming, Zach retrieves a seashell from the seafloor and gives it to Lauren as a gift. Meanwhile, Michelle flirts with James. Amy walks the deck with Dan and shares with him her fear that her phobia will be passed on to their daughter, Sarah. In a moment of pampering, Dan picks up Amy and jumps into the water with her despite her hysterical cries. Amy begins to panic, and flashbacks from the day her father died flood her mind. The friends try to calm her down, but their voices sound distant to her. Suddenly, everyone realizes Dan forgot to lower the ladder before jumping into the water, and they are now trapped in open water with only little Sarah left on the boat. To soothe his wife, James hums a lullaby to Amy while the group tries to climb back onto the boat by kicking off the water, but their efforts fail due to the high sides. Michelle starts to panic and clings to an inflatable dolphin, while Dan tries to use it to climb onto the boat but the toy quickly deflates under his weight. Seeing a flag waving on the stern, Dan attempts to grab hold of it and finally succeeds on his third try. However, the flag is unstable and won't support his weight. At this point, Amy regains her senses, and everyone takes a moment to think about what to do next. Michelle becomes hysterical once again, this time convinced there is a shark lurking beneath them. Dan bravely dives underwater to check, but there is no sign of any predators. Despite this, everyone knows it's only a matter of time before they appear. The group starts to turn on Dan, blaming him for their predicament. Amy tearfully reminds them that they need to find a way out because Sarah is alone on the boat. Michelle's hysteria escalates, and due to exhaustion, she begins to drown and tries to take Amy's life jacket. They push her away, and Lauren tries to calm her down by putting her on her back and reading a prayer aloud. The group spends some more time under the blazing sun. The group is exhausted and dehydrated. They suddenly hear a ringing cell phone coming from Zach's jacket, which is dangling nearby. Dan manages to throw the jacket to Zach, who answers the call, but they are unable to communicate due to the soaked phone. Michelle snatches the phone out of Zach's hands in distress, and it falls into the water, leaving them without a chance to make contact. Dan suggests a new rescue plan, stripping off their belongings and tying them together with a rope to throw onto the boat. Just then, the group sees a passing boat speeding by. They desperately try to signal for help, but the boat's occupants do not understand their situation and wave back before continuing on their way. The group goes back to Dan's original plan. They cut up the clothes they found in Zach's jacket using the knife and create a rope from the pieces. James asks Dan if they can get to the boat from below, but Dan doesn't know. So, he checks the boat himself and dives underwater with the knife. Meanwhile, the group throws the homemade rope on board, and Zach tries to use it to climb up, but the rope breaks, and Zach falls back into the water. James also fails and accidentally loses the knife during a dive. To retrieve the sinking knife, he swims too deep and hits the bottom of the boat during his ascent. Lauren examines James and discovers blood from his ear, indicating a head injury that requires immediate medical attention. This is the breaking point for Zach, who decides to take more extreme measures to rescue themselves. He takes James' knife and starts to puncture a hole in the boat to climb up. 
Dan tries to stop him, not wanting to damage the boat. In the struggle, Dan accidentally stabs Zack in the stomach, and the situation spirals out of control. Meanwhile, Sarah cries hysterically on the radio, as she wakes up and can't find her parents. Zack's severe injury is left untreated, and he slowly and painfully dies. Michelle, due to fatigue, drifts away from the group and eventually goes under. Despite Dan's attempts to save her, it is too late. Zack, struggling to breathe, tries to make a joke and reminisces about their past trip. He wishes Dan had brought a camera this time. His last thought is of Lauren, remembering how beautiful she looked the last time they saw each other. Zack goes limp, and Lauren holds his lifeless body and sobs uncontrollably. James becomes agitated and blames Dan for valuing the boat more than their friends' lives. Amy attempts to pacify her spouse, but his rage increases upon seeing his wife defend her ex-partner. James's agitated behavior prompts him to vomit. Dan confesses to his companions that he deceived them about the yacht and his financial status. It becomes apparent that Dan illicitly borrowed the yacht from his employer, who employed him as an errand boy. He posed as the owner of the boat to entice attractive women like Michelle. Dan desired to boast to his old friends about his affluent lifestyle to mask the fact that he hadn't achieved anything in all these years. That's why he didn't want the knife nicks left on his yacht, now, his best friend is dead. Dan breaks down in tears as he realizes the gravity of his actions. Lauren finally admits her unspoken feelings for Zack, but it's too late now. Amy urges Dan to let go of Zack's body. They spend several more hours adrift at sea, with everyone reminiscing about their lives. James' condition deteriorates, and he starts to ramble. Unable to bear the inactivity any longer, Lauren bids farewell and sets off to swim to shore for help. Meanwhile, little Sarah continues to cry. In an attempt to calm the crying baby through the radio, Amy's efforts prove to be futile. She recalls Zack's suggestion of retrieving a knife on board and prepares to jump into the water to find it. Dan intervenes and decides to dive into the water himself, hoping to make amends with his friends. As the sky grows darker, Amy is left alone with James on the water. James occasionally loses consciousness and complains of fatigue and a headache. As it starts to rain, James quietly passes away, leaving Amy in a state of shock and sorrow. Despite hearing Amy's screams, Dan continues his search for the knife. Night falls, and Amy finally comes to terms with the death of her husband, letting go of his body. As she bids farewell, she softly hums the lullaby they once sang together with their daughter before bedtime. Dan surfaces from the water, yelling in pain as his arm cramps up. To help him swim to the boat, Amy offers her life vest. Meanwhile, the storm is growing stronger, and their chances of survival are rapidly diminishing. Frustrated and feeling helpless, Dan slams his goggles against the stern of the boat. The goggles break, leaving only the glass, which hurts his hand. Suddenly, he has an idea of how to use the glass to help them. Dan wedges the glass into the gap between the board and the folding gangway and grips it with his hand. He calls out to Amy, who tries to climb onto the boat using Dan's hand as a foothold. Despite the heavy rain, she tries to grasp the board, but her hand slips, and she falls into the water. Dan encourages her not to give up and to try again. She then climbs on his shoulders and makes another attempt to climb up. Dan struggles to hold on to the sharp shard of glass, screaming in pain every time Amy steps on his arm. Amy's hand slips again, and she falls. However, she gathers all her remaining strength and makes another attempt. Finally, she manages to cling to the side and climb to the deck. Overwhelmed with emotion, Dan laughs and shouts for joy. Amy lowers the gangway and immediately runs into the cabin to her sobbing daughter. Meanwhile, Dan clings to the gangway but stops to ponder his options. He is faced with a choice, to follow his friend and save himself or accept punishment for what happened to his friends due to his mistake. Amy takes Sarah in her arms, comforting her and lying down next to her, relieved that the nightmare is over. Shortly after, she realizes that Dan is missing. Stepping out onto the deck, she spots a solitary life jacket bobbing in the water and sees Dan's unmoving silhouette in the distance. She attempts to shout out to him and toss the life jacket, but it falls short. Amy understands that her guilt led Dan to make the decision to drown himself. She remembers the way her father drowned in front of her when she was a child and, determined to avoid another tragedy, she overcomes her fear and swims after Dan. Despite him sinking, Amy persists in trying to save him. Amy's memories of the past intertwine with the present. She remembers trying to save her father, just as she has tried to save her husband and friends. As morning arrives, a fishing boat approaches the yacht. The fisherman swims around the empty vessel and calls out to the passengers, but there is no answer. Eventually, the fishing boat sails away. In the cabin, Sarah wakes up and starts to cry. Amy stands on the deck, looking out into the distance. 
Dan lies at her feet, unconscious, but saved. The fishing boat is no longer in sight, and only the sound of the engine can be heard in the distance. Despite the tragedy, Amy has survived and can finally return home. Hope you enjoyed and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more movie recaps.